Hi, hello, how are you? Um, windy and wet here again and a storm expected. So um, I'm just talking about the dogs today, how we keep them healthy because there's been lots and lots of questions as to how do we keep the dogs healthy, what do we feed them. So I'm just going to run through a few herbal remedies and just basically tell you what we do which is uh, literally it's nothing. But first of all Last weekend I went around the second hand shops in Clifton and then on Sunday I went to um, a, a sale of bits and bobs to raise money for the local cat and dog rescue charity. And this is what I got. I got some beautiful linen napkins. I've already got some pink napkins so these are going to kind of blend in with them. And I love white um, cloths to put on tables and tops and things and a runner so these are linen as well and I was thrilled to get them they're embroidered with sunflowers or whatever they are and I just love getting these things because they're pre-loved and they've still got so much life in them and somebody's made them and I just think they're gorgeous so they need to be ironed and get all those creases out. I also got a huge bag of books, six books for one euro in one shop and then one euro each at the sale. So I have months of reading ahead of me and I couldn't resist this uh, scale. I have my gypsy scale here which I love to use because it's got the old-fashioned weights but I love that one as well because it looks quite vintagey and um, it'll come in handy because sometimes you're weighing more than one thing at a time. So on to the dogs. So the dogs really we do nothing and we never go to the vet because I just don't see the point. Um, I don't think and forgive me vets if any vets are watching uh, certainly here, I don't think they really know what to do with small animals because they're more geared towards farm animals, cows, horses, sheep, that's, that kind of animal. But dogs and cats, I don't think they know much. So basically our dogs, they're running around outside all day, they're on the earth grounding, um, they get lots of love and attention and they're very healthy. They do self-medicate with various types of grass and the only problems we ever have is that one or other of them sometimes gets digestive upsets. And so what we can do for Jazz and for Brock is we can give them herbal remedies exactly the same ones that we would give to people with um, digestive upsets. So ginger, very good for nausea and sickness, chamomile, very good for soothing an upset tummy, very good for calming things down. Um, but basically anything that you use for yourself, you can give to your dog. The dose will be different because you have to take into account that um, we don't really know what kind of dose they want. So a smaller dog like Brock would get less than Jazz would because she's bigger. And then Jazz is probably, I would dose Jazz as you would for up to a child of 12. So, you know, dogs are very um, companionable. They love to be in the pack. They love to be with us. And so um, you have to welcome them into your family but I think they need to know that they're beneath us in the pecking order because we are the ones in charge. So it's taken a while for Jazz to understand that, but she's maturing now. She's about four or five and she is slowly beginning to understand that we are the boss. But they're very good. They love each other. So they have dog company and human company. And... Um, and we love their company as well. But other kind of doggy issues are things like um, worms. So just as you would give to a child some garlic, um, maybe some wormwood, some calendula, things that are gonna be cleansing and um, will help to get rid of worms, will do the trick for dogs as they will do for people. So a list of herbs that I would use for the dogs would be 
chamomile chamomile is a great nervine as well so if if you have a nervous or anxious dog you know a dog that's barking all the time because they just don't know what they're supposed to be doing chamomile will help to calm them and soothe their nerves and also obviously the digestive system as well so once you know what herbs can do in terms of their effect on a particular body system it's exactly the same for dogs so just as we would do a, net, a green cleanse in springtime using nettles and dandelion leaves and cleavers we can do we use the same herbs for the dogs it wouldn't hurt them and um, it'll just give them a bit more pep as well some of the herbs that i would use would be herbs that we can use for a green cleanse like nettles dandelion leaf and cleavers at this time of year um, ginger for nausea and travel sickness and if they're feeling the cold, same as for a person. Um, turmeric, if you've got an old dog that has a bit of arthritis and getting stiff, you could give them ginger, you could give them turmeric, um, a cinnamon, anything at all that you use for yourself, give it to a dog, but give it, a, I would, for dogs like these two, I would use a children's dose. And then in terms of food, wormwood I mentioned earlier chop it into the food any of these herbs can be chopped into the food it could you can make a tea and put the tea into their water or you can give them a dose of tincture just a tiny few drops of tincture because we don't want to give dogs alcohol so you might even think of giving them um, an apple cider vinegar tincture or a glycerite but um, probably chopping things into their food is one of the best ways to get the herbs into them. So um, milk thistle, dandelion, chamomile, ginger, turmeric, anything else that you can think of. The wormwood is a very potent and strong herb to be giving anyone. So as with a person, you'd only give it for maybe a, a week or two at a time. Same with the dog, maybe even less often because they're smaller beings. In terms of their food, um, we've never given them dried food because that can be very harmful to the kidneys and the urinary system. So they always get wet food and we basically just use supermarket canned food. Every now and again, we give them fresh meat. So it's usually beef mincemeat or pork mincemeat. We give them bits of chicken, we give them oily fish. And um, in not so long ago, we had a butcher in town who used all the offcuts and the gristle and the stuff that people didn't want. And they would grind it down and make a dog meat from it. And you can't get that anymore. And I've been to the two butchers in town asking for these offcuts so that I could do that myself. And they're not allowed to give it anymore because of health and safety, whatever that means. They're not allowed even to give away the waste from, you know, all the cuts and everything that they're doing and the chopping up they're doing. So I don't know where that waste meat goes. Maybe this somebody sells it off to dog meat canneries but certainly you can't get it anymore. And it's way too expensive to be buying fresh meat all the time. So they get some for a day or two of the week and then it's just canned dog food after that. And as I said, maybe some oily fish. So whenever I'm in any kind of position where I'm not sure what to do, I revert back to the mother of herbalism, which is Juliet de Barakley Levi. <laughs> And she worked a lot with dogs particularly, but also with other animals. And she published a couple of books um, about how to care for animals. And she recommends that dogs have, you know, fresh meat as much as possible, but she also includes other things. So we give our dogs oats in the morning. We don't make porridge, but we do mix them with water and they get a little portion of that with their other food, whether it's the fresh meat or the canned meat. And um, that seems to give them lots of energy and keep them healthy as well. And occasionally they get a, a fresh egg from the chickens, just broken into the bowl and they eat the shell and everything. So they're getting a bit of calcium that way. And as for water, 
they prefer really to drink wild water outside so they will drink from any container that's captured rainwater they drink from puddles and they rarely drink tap water so when we notice that we we do put down water for them but it's from the um it's filtered water from the kitchen it's funny how they're wise enough to not drink tap water because of all the added chemicals so they prefer streams ditches puddles and any container that has taken water from the rainfall <laughs> So we don't really have any health issues and we don't go to the vet and we wouldn't go for any kind of injections at all unless they had a road accident for example or some terrible physical accident but for anything else we just look after them ourselves and they're just brimming over with health and um, they're just a joy to have around and of course they're outside with us so they're always busy with us they just love to be with us and um, and then their exercise is walking up and down the road, going to the beach for long runs and um, that's how we look after our dogs. So my main takeaway for you is keep everything simple, give them the best food that you can afford and um, you know lots of love as well. Isn't that right doggies? So that's it and um, it's a bit of a horrible day for W today. They're clever enough to know what a W-A-L-K is so I won't say the word. In fact they're nearly able to spell it at this stage um, but they will get out later on so I'll see you next week and next week I'll be talking about herbs for the menopause. So have a great week in the meantime and take care and enjoy your dogs. We'll see you then. I hope you enjoyed today's film. If you did, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And have a look at the website, danusirishherbgarden.com, for more information about us and about the herbal medicine courses I offer and the Wise Woman Way training. And if you go to the shop, you can find the books, the weed handbooks and other herbal goodies. And remember, we put a new film out every Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Mm -hmm.